Hey, Wood Turners, I'm Captain Eddie Castlin. Welcome to the shop. I have a little bitty project for you today, but it's going to involve different chucks and different ways to hold things. And a little double stick tape. <laughs> you want to get stuck to a project? This is where. Keep an eye on me in. <laughs> hey, Captain Eddie here. I've been looking around in the shop, and I have a whole bunch of scrap lumber. I'm going to call it scrap. I have a whole bunch of lumber out there that I really can't figure out what to do with. Some blocks are maybe, you know, and, and so I decided I'm going to make a few little projects to show around. Now, this is what one of them will be. It's a keychain or a key fob. That's all it is. Now, this was done by Dale Campbell. He's a master of the ornamental lathe. He really is. And he did this one to impress a friend of mine that came with us. Yeah, when he says I'm going to back it out six one thousandths of an inch, the guy looks at me like, really? You know, yeah, we just go, you know, about that much. But that's a simple key right now, key fob. Here's another one. And for this one, I embedded a small coin. The other side is yet for decoration. But this with a small coin, I made a whole bunch of them to give away at Christmas a long time ago when I still had a job. <clears throat> and I put a state quarter in each one. And I found out where the different architects were all from because they did not all live in this town. And I found their quarter. You go to the car wash, put a dollar, five dollars in, get a whole bucket of quarters. And I found their quarters and then laid them. It was such a nice gift to say, here you go from Arkansas, here you go from Illinois, here you go from New York. Um, and it was a nice little treat. Well, we're going to make a, one of these or two of these and put them in pockets so I don't lose it. And we're going to use some drops of wood I have in the shop. They're going to go on this faceplate. Now, take a good look at this. This is a indexable uh, ex all right concentric eccentric uh i don't know paul holmes makes it for ruth niles he's well, probably one of the world's finest machinists um and this screws onto a a, a pen mandrel i mean a mandrel for a, a bottle stopper i know this stuff okay that's what's on here and then i have a piece of good old-fashioned where is it Ply, uh, one by six. Good old fashioned one by six. I bought that to put the deck underneath the, um, the, the uh, grinder. But one, just plain. Now you can use anything you want. And because of the price of lumber today, don't waste anything. All right. I put this on there. Now, what you might see here is I've got a slight depression in the center of it, and I have a line cut through it. I'll explain more about the line in a moment. But the depression helps when I want to take this from stage one and go to stage two. I'm leaving a little bit raised in the center, and I don't need to make contact all the way across. So I, only need to make, I don't need to make contact in the center. If you wonder how we're going to do that, that's what the tape is all about, the double stick. All right. To put this block onto the faceplate, I sanded the faceplate a little bit to clean it up, and then I put the tape I'm using on this block, just like this. I peeled it off, stuck it on the block, and then I trimmed it down with one of my tools, because this is aluminum. Uh, I didn't have to worry about screwing a tool up too bad. But here's the secret to this whole project. I have to get over to, I gotta find my roll. Now I'm ready to talk turkey. All right. I use a tape. I used to be able to buy at Lowe's. But Lowe's changed the vendor. And then they threw out what they had. Well, get this. I bought this more than 10 years ago at Lowe's. More than 10 years ago. And I went, I went back in a while back and said, do you have any more of this? And the guy got this story, you know. Um, first thing he said, don't make it anymore. <laughs> I love it. When you run across some money in a retail outlet that's really not versed in the entire thing, but they're an, ex they're an expert when you ask a question like that. All right, I wanted this tape. This is Sure Tape, S-H-U-R-T-A-P-E. 
And you can find their website at SureTape.com. There you go. Or you can call them at, get this, here's a good number, 1-888-442-TAPE. What if they sell tape? Right. Now, the beauty of this, it's a double stick tape. But it's not like that cheeky crap. Oh, pardon me. That cheeky stuff they sell that you put under a rug and it stays there. This is not cheeky. It's not, well, it's not expensive, but it's just not cheeky. Um, I've tried all the others. I tried the ones that's in made for wood turning. <laughs> Piece goes off. Because, well, you got to do this, you got to do that. With this tape, what you got to do is figure out how to get it on and off. Okay? This stuff really sticks. Now, what I found is put it on it. Make sure you need a full width. All right, I'm doing it for this demonstration, but I normally don't put this much on it. All right, and then you have to pick it off. Now, the trick to this, and you can be mad at me when you buy this, you just want to score it. Just score it with a knife. Not cut all the way through. And then you go in and pick up the blue tape and start working it off or the cover tape, okay? Now, if you don't score it, you try to go from the edge, bring a sandwich. You're going to be a while. All right. Now, we have it cleaned off the back. Now, oh, wait, I almost forgot. i got to talk about that groove. You have to go, you have to start a groove in before you make it round. Okay, why? You don't want to be messing with round pieces on your bandsaw. Square pieces or, or got flat bottom, you can push it and make the groove. You need the groove to be big enough to get something through it like I'm going to use my knockout rod. It'll slip right through here and it's a knockout rod. It is. You understand. But that's why the groove is that size. Is it precise? No. It's that size. I've cut my groove through, and I don't go with the grain. I go across the grain. I cut my groove through on a bandsaw. And then I've come, I came back, and I can put my knife in the right spot. I love it. Mag, big magnets. Okay. You put it in the right spot, pull the tape off, put it on there, bring the tail stock up, and just put a little pressure on it. Just a little pressure. You got time to get a cup of coffee. Maybe clean up, get your, go cut your blocks, whatever you got to do. Give it about five minutes, a whole five minutes. All right, and that's the, that's the first time you got to glue something on this faceplate. Then you have it. All right, now we have it on there. I'm going to set up the lathe and make one cut to round it off because I don't want this big chunky thing sticking out. Okay, and then I'm going to take my scraper and put a little detent right here in the center. I just took my three quarter round scraper and. Passed it back. You like that noise? <whistles> Passed it back and forth and cleaned out the depression. It's not as wide as my piece. It's because I need to get some bearing on it. All right, you'll see that in a moment. <clears throat> now, what? I, sorry, we're going to have to get into the discussing the particulars of how this works. Particulars. Okay, here are the particulars. The size of this is determined by the stainless steel ring. I can get them at the craft stores or, or catalog services. All right. This runs, for me, one and three quarters of an inch, out to out. If you make it too small, the steel rim will fall off too easy. If you make it too big, you can't get the ring on without damaging the goods. So size a little bit. Do a test piece if you need to to get the size right. Set your caliber so you get the groove right. Uh, there's not a lot of magic to it, but if you downsize, you're not going to be happy. And if you upsize, you're going to be even less happy, or one way or the other. So that's the critical part. I run with one and three quarters of an inch. Now, a minute ago, I was starting to show you this, and I broke my fob off. So now i got to get my epoxy out and figure out how to fix this fob. Um, maybe I'll, I'll wait. We'll get to that later. All right. Now, I have a block of wood. I want to put on here and to bring it down to size. <clears throat> if you really, really, well, I guess you got to stick around. I'm going to show you what you really, really want to do. Here's the deal. I missed a step. Okay. 
I told you that my finished piece would be one and three quarter inches across. When I have my glue block on, what I should have done was turn the glue block down right here, this piece of pine, turn it down to one and three quarters heavy. And that way when I'm turning this down, I don't need to calibrate it a whole lot. I know when I'm there, check it, and then voila. But I missed it. No voila this time. Okay, now I'm going to dress that down a little bit. Shields down. Whoa, that had to hurt, huh? Shields down. Now I have this block. It's a pretty piece of wood, and I don't remember what it's called. And you'll probably recognize it and tell me. So I have to go all the way back to the faceplate. I can go back a little bit and that's fine. Where I like to be a little bit heavier on one and three quarters. I'm still knocking corners off this, but I just want to check it and see. You know, I'm, I'm a little bit heavy. It's just a fuzz heavy. You know, heavy, small mark. Shield up again. If you do this on the first pass, you don't have to go back and check it so often. Get this right, and we, this is your guide. Why well, I didn't do that, I don't know. I want to fix it. I have this down to the one and three quarter heavy smudge. I still have my pass through hole in here, my knockout hole. I've got my piece on, but it is about five eighths of an inch across. I don't want five eighths. Really, but that's the pieces I, I, I saw it out of. So really, I need to go about half of that thickness. So right now, I need to dress the face off. Now, pay pay attention to just one thing here. This is being held on by double stick tape. And I brought up my tailstock just to secure it, but I'm going to knock the tailstock out of the way. Yeah, get down that tailstock. All right, now I've got, you see what I'm working over? This is my life diaper. Yeah. You hadn't seen this before. This is, my wife did this for me. Um, see when you lay things on a lathe and it'll fall through the waves and all that? Well, I can work on top of mine and got all the stuff in a way. And I, it's not falling through. It's not. But the beauty is if I do the finish on this, which I'll do in a little bit, when I put the finish on this, if it drips, it drips onto my diaper. Yeah. Isn't that what a diaper's for? <clears throat> and it makes it simple. Now, that's putting finishes on and stuff like that. But like when you're changing chucks and you got those little screws and you drop them, they hit the floor. You're never going to get them back again. You drop them in the diaper. You pick them back up. Diaper gets dirty, you throw it in the laundry. Don't tell the boss you did that. Just throw it in the laundry and wash it. It comes back. Now, mine stays in place because I got magnets in it. Doop. Doop. And I spread out and drop it. My wife did all this for me. I'll put the details on how to, if you want to make one. We're still working out how to mail them if we make them. Uh, if we do them with the magnets, it's... Whew, don't screw the postal service. All right. Now, we have it like this. I want to bring back down to size. The size I want. Hey, take note of this. I'm making scraping cuts across to get a new face on it. It's being held by double stick tape. Then a couple of good. Now, on regular tape, this thing would have been spinning across the floor. With tape, tape out of the hardware store, it'll probably be right next to it. Oh, this shirt tape can be purchased on Amazon.com. When you buy it, get two rolls. Give your buddy one.
and making clean, quick passes. All slicing cuts. Sanded to this to I believe 400, just damn fine. I got out my CA, my little piece of blue towel. Guy came to visit the other day and he saw a little bit of roll of blue towel, and he saw that's trash on it, and he threw it away. Well, he got wet when he threw it away. Threw it. No, every scrap is good. And I'll put a little bit on a on a uh, paper towel. I don't use cloth. On a paper towel, rub it in. What did that do? That created a sealed surface for me because I need that sealed surface when I flip it around because I really, really want that tape to hold on. Not just really want it, I really, really want it. And you'll understand about the tape in just a moment. <sighs> Let's travel back in time. Remember I showed you a little while ago how I put all that tape on the back of this and then I turned on it. And did all that slicing and everything, cut the outside. And I didn't put the groove in it because it's important. I put it when I flip it around it, I get things balanced. Here I go with my knockout rod. And this is no exaggeration. It takes a lot of effort to get it off. I have put a bowl with a six inch disc on it on the face plate to trim up the other side. It was a great idea. Couldn't get it off the faceplate. Couldn't do it. Um, the bowl's in, in history right now. Now, I've got it off. Now, this is one pretty piece of wood, isn't it? Do you know what it is? I'd love to know. You probably 50, 60 opinions. All right, got that cleaned up. I want to stick it back on again. Watch. I put my tape on the back of the piece, on the finished side. Peeling this blue stuff off can be rough, but that little tip I gave you will work. Score it. Don't cut through it. Score it. Lift it off. Now, this is one and three quarters already. This little piece right here. That's one and three quarters. This is one and three quarters. I can take them. Get the science. I can take them and line them up and then... Tighten up my headstock a little bit. And water boom, mighty bang, it's there. It's on there. Get a can, sandwich, whatever you want. But it's it's there. So next step is to bring it down the proper size while I was here. See, I could be a little bit out of round here. Um, I doubt it because I'm just that good. I can bring down the size. I can put the groove in it and then work at fixing the face. Then I show you a technique I can do using this face plate that really decorates it. First, time for a sandwich. I took the ring off one of my key rings. Now, this interior dimension here, that is roughly one and nine sixteenths. Nine sixteenths is one little bump past the one half mark, okay? Um, in school today, they don't teach them that stuff. It's not calibrated. All right. One and nine sixteenths. So I set my caliper at one and nine sixteenths. I get my granddaughter coming by in a couple of days to show me how to change the batteries on this. But I have my caliper set at one and nine sixteenths. I'm going to take my little bitty skinny butt parting tool and put that groove in at one and nine sixteenths. Now, one pass may not make it. I may have to make it a little bit wider. Stick around, we're going to get this done.
put my groove in and I checked it and I'm right at one and nine sixteenths. Might be a fuzz heavy, but I'll have to check it again in a minute. All right now, I, I wasn't. I'm not as true as I like to be, so I'm going to take my skew and my gouge and clean up that edge a little bit and then face it off. You with me? Good slicing cuts will give you a good finish. If you plow into it or try to do a scrape, you're going to tear it up. But I got a pretty good cut here. And the outside dimension should be 1 and 11 sixteenths. That's three little bumps after the half inch mark. All right. And then I'm pretty close to being right. I'm going to get this tailstock out of the way, dress across that face, and then we'll continue with something else. I'm starting about making a couple of pull passes just to create a smooth surface. Now I'm looking right over the edge and I can see I have about an eighth of an inch from the face to here. I want to have about an eighth of an inch from the face to here. Going with a nice easy slicing cut. Don't rush it. Please allow the tool to cut at its rate. I do a slicing cut. I go in and get a bite with the, the flute being vertical. And then I open the door a little bit. That's like the on off switch. Open the door a little bit and then make a pass. This is really good. I don't have any grooves or tears or anything in the face of it. This is going to finish out nice. Where did I knock my stuff to? Sanded it down to 400. All the surfaces here. Even cleaned up the groove a little bit with a full piece of sandpaper. Now this is what you'd be holding when it's all done. So you want it to look good. Now I might be, you may think I'm rushing a little bit. But I'm going to put a little finish on the face of this. Um, and the reason is I'm going to embellish it. And to embellish it, I'm going to be putting some grooves in it. And I want it to look nice and even all the way around. Now I can redo this CA finish at any point. I mean, it's just that easy to do it. And I took like a strip of paper off to do it. Heard somebody the other day, don't you waste a lot of paper? How many sheets do you use? <sighs> it's like counting the sheets in toilet paper. I see the advertisements on the side. Five inch rolls, 853 sheets or something. Who counts that? Really? Who counts that? Now, got the CA on there, and now I'm ready to embellish it a little bit. That's where the magic is. Right here. I said the magic right here. This is a mandrel that Paul Holmes makes for Ruth Niles. It is, it's a very simple device, uh, but it's, it uses a drawbar. What's a drawbar? I've had guys tell me, I never use a drawbar. That is into my Morse taper. If I cut out, make an out cut, I could pull it out of my Morse taper. With a draw bar that goes through my headstock and I tighten it down, this is a much more solid fit and it won't pull off. Now, I took it off. Now, this is what the back of my faceplate looks like. The new ones may be a different configuration, but they do the same thing. They're numbered. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight all in order. All right, so I want to move to number three because it looks pretty good there. All right, I'm going to thread it back on in number three. And you have to see what's happening here is when I thread this on, 
and bring it up to the mandrel again. And I don't put WD stuff on this stuff. This has got that Boeing T9 on it. Now, this is now running out of line, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't that cool? I can do three here and then pull it off and do a five or a seven or a nine and I can have scratches or grooves going one way and then across it the other way. No two will come out the same. You love that. Okay. Now I have it on here. Let's give you a little detail. I'm ready to start my embellishment. Smart way, I don't have one around me, is use a a china marker, like a white china marker, and put marks on the face to see what the design is going to be. But remember, you have to get those marks off. So if you're rubbing china marker and it goes into the pores here, you're going to have a shadow around your work. So laying out the first time, just eyeballing it, see where it should be. When you get started, you'll understand. But now I'm going to zoom in and start cutting my grooves. I'm using my parting tool to start. Look at that oscillation. Isn't that cool? That one gave me a very light pass. I can see where it's at. Now I can go closer to the center to get a little bit different orb. Go ahead and ask me what I'd do if I didn't have my little parting tool. My detail gouge with my Mark's Lay grind on it. I just enhance them a little bit. Now this is, I'd say would be the smiley face. Yep, smiley face detail. It's off a of center point, so it works. It's pushed out, so that works. And now I'm just about ready to rub this out a little bit and put a little finish on it. That's all it takes. Okay, I rubbed in my little super glue finish, cleaned it all up, and let it cure a little bit, and then buff it with those scotch brights. This is almost ready. The only thing left is I have to do a little detent where the ring will fit. So your second ring will snap over it. I'd like to say I'm going to take it over to my belt sander and put that little detent in it. Or I take it over to my... When my shop got ruined... Somebody in a cleanup crew decided all that stuff must be junk because it got wet. All you people who live where it floods, you understand my frustration. Just because it gets wet doesn't mean it's trash. All right, I'm going to pop this off. Now, this is where I should be, this should be sponsored by some money. But we're not sponsored. We operate this whole thing on our budget. Our budget is. Big Eye Productions or www.eddiecastellan.com. We sell carbide cutters, handles, bars, templates, and all that stuff. Hey, it's right there on our website. Right? Yeah. And, oh, yeah, by the way, we need your business. All right. I put my knockout bar back in here. I'm going to ease this off. Now, remember, only had a little bit of face holding it. I have about, oh, right here, I'm looking at about a quarter inch of contact from where the, you saw what I had to do to get it off, about a quarter inch of contact. If you don't put the groove and you don't have a strong knockout rod, this is my one-way drawbar knockout, if you don't do this, you can't get it back off. You can't tap it with a hammer, you'll damage it. So pull it off easily. If you drop this on the floor, it's going to stick on the floor. Make a ball out of it or something. 
And if you're watching TV in the living room with your wife, and she said, what's that on your shoe? You'll know you stepped in something that stuck to you. So that's I have this cleaned up. I can get a little close up on it and show you what it looks like. And it's just three scratches. Could I have done that on the other side? Certainly. When I had this side facing out, I could have moved my chuck to off center by some degree and scribed a couple of lines in or put some deeper grooves or whatever. And when I flip it around, do the opposite on the other side. And you've just made something that's unique. And the, the key to selling things at craft fairs is to get them to stop and show them something that's unique. Um, and this is one. So it's a simple little project. You're coming away with a key ring, fob, and you have a little bit of fun. The important thing about what we did a little bit today is how to hold it. It's not what I turned. It's how to hold it because you can take what I showed you just now and apply it to so many different things. You can put, turn yourself a saucer or a platter, double stick it to the face of this, and do that detailing on it. You can. You can do it to a bowl. You, pretty much anything you want to put that ornamentation on. And this is so versatile, I mean, and so easy. How hard is it just to unscrew something off a mandrel if you want to, if you keep track, they have numbers on the back, so you know you go right back into the same spot again. That's that's pretty simple. Um, this face plate is double stuck to this one, and you've seen we worked on it, beat on it, and all that. It still would be help me to get it off. I'm probably going to take it over when I need to get it off, cut it all the way through, and use a screwdriver to break it out holds that good all right we've been playing a shop a few little projects i've had a little fun today i got to give something away i've got a nephew really wants a key to carry his keys he's a grandnephew he's that's the big deal hey i'm captain eddie castle and i'm in a shop i'm making shavings how about you take care be good and above all else please be safe Oh, did I say I'm making shavings? Yeah, I thought I did.